So I want to show you guys uh, my latest build, which was uh, with the Raspberry Pi 2 that I got for Christmas from my girlfriend. And, um, so let's just start with the bare bones basic. I, I took and modified the Sony portable DVD player. It's a 9 inch screen, 800 by 480 screen resolution. And one thing that I liked about this was besides having fairly well screen resolution, was the fact that it swivels. One, one, yeah all the way around and you can fold it up flat so whenever like you, you use it in the road or something you can get into a better form factor where it could fit better somewhere so a little bit about this um I smoothed the inside out here I took out all the lines obviously the DVD logo the button that doesn't need the open button because there's no disc tray anymore in there and um so unlike my other projects like the controller or the helmet this was this was not really heavily engineering like like really reliant. It was not like a complete ground up build like the other ones, like a controller or anything. Uh, so I took a Raspberry Pi two and basically depopulated all the you know the highest elevation stuff, the GPIO pins, Ethernet port, and the USB port. I took those uh, four USB ports and moved them to the front of the portable DVD player, they stick out a little bit, but I filled the sides up with Bondo and just painted a flat black. Also on top here, I just filled all the little creases up with Bondo and painted it black. And also on the side, I cut a little slit so you have access to the, obviously the three and a half millimeter audio video connector and the HDMI port. So right now on the Raspberry Pi 2, I have a class 10, eight gigabyte. SD card and also 16 gigabyte USB drive on it that stores all the ROM. So the for the because I'm mainly gonna be running N64 games, I have the the Raspberry Pi's processor, RAM, and GPU overclock. So I did put internal like uh, internal like heat sinks on there, some aluminum heat sinks. I have no fans in there because I have pretty big surface area of heat sinks all around both the GPU and the CPU, oh, it's one combination, but yeah, that, um, for the power of the Raspberry Pi, since I took out the laser, the motor that moves the laser and the motor that spins the disc, all I did was just pin out the main board of the portable DVD player and just tapped into it. So before I did all that, I cut the laser or the motor that spins the CD wire and hooked up my multimeter to it just to get a current read on it and at max speed it was getting about 700 milliamps which I thought it could be enough because to run the Raspberry Pi because I'm not running much off of it these controllers only, I think they only take about 100 milliamps each to run that so it's nothing major power dependency so we took out that motor and the motor that moves the laser and the laser which the main board of the DVD player should be able to hold that fine, or power everything fine. And, um, so, but they weren't, the controllers all programmed up and I'll get some N64 running. Just show how it runs. I have everything pretty much set to work perfectly with the N64, because unlike most other emulators, the N64 emulators to get a smooth running game and still pretty processor heavy and also RAM heavy so that was all needed to be overclocked. It's overclocked to 1 gigahertz and that's why I threw the heat sinks on there. And I'm still working on the screen size to get it to fully fit but it's pretty good right now. Basically runs really smooth, and there was n there was no real engineering behind it besides depopulating it. And since it uses all lead-free solder, the hardest part was uh, taking out those ports on, and I just did that with just a little butane lighter. Yeah. See, as you guys see, it runs really smooth. No lag. There's no lag between the video and the audio either. Uh, as I was playing earlier with the girlfriend, 
the uh, two player works perfect. I ha I only have two controllers, so I can really try more, but we were running perfect with that. I I do not have any frame skipping on or any uh memory split either. It's just it's just basically all default configuration except for with the slight overclocking. We didn't need to watch that. But, um, yeah, so just stay tuned for future builds because now I have a 3D printer and some of the projects will get better and not so reliant on pre manufactured cases and materials. Thank you.